is. Now, let me, let me just dive, dive right in. If you have your Bibles with you this morning, uh, I want you to open or turn or, or, or look at on the screen with me. Genesis chapter 2, verse 24. It's the same verse we, we're going to use. this probably the whole series. Don't know. I'll add some things in there. We're doing a series on marriage. Please don't turn me off or tune me out. If you're not married, don't plan to be married or single again and don't plan to ever be in that kind of situation again. Be careful what you say, all right? But uh, I don't want you to tune me out, turn me off. I don't want you to uh, that are listening and watching by live feed. I promise you these are just principles that you can apply and be a better Christian, be a better human being, if you, even if you don't believe in Jesus, that if you apply these principles to your life, that this is the one thing I want to have said and done when I am finished, when I am being spoke over, okay? Not my ashes, all right, but my body, my shell, is I want people to say outside of my family, all right, they, they'll say more, but I want people to say, well, he was real, and that he didn't teach us all the Greek and the Hebrew, but he taught us how to get through Monday uh, to Saturday. And, that, and so I just want to give you practical application. I also want to put a disclaimer out there that my parenting abilities is not good. My husband and abilities are not good, okay? We don't have a perfect marriage. We don't have perfect kids. Uh, far from it. Um, and it's work, all right? It's just, it's just work. And that's, that's, that is life, okay? Uh, so when I give you illustrations or I talk about our family, yes, I'll share the good, the bad, and the ugly, but there's a lot of good things in there. There's a lot of discipline and a lot of love. Don't ever think that I'm just trying to give you the highlights and brag on my family. I'm just trying to be transparent with you and show you. And yes, I know what it's like to have a marriage go really, really, really bad. I know what it's like to have your heart ripped out, looked at, spit on, stomped on, or whatever you want to say, and think that life is over, okay? I understand God is a God of second chances. I understand that the statistics for divorce in our country is over 50% inside the church, outside the church, beside the church, whatever. It's that way. And if you went to the doctor and they said you got a 50% chance of living, if you take care of this situation, whatever that is, you do everything you could do with a sense of urgency to, to fix the problem and to make it the best it could possibly be. And so this series, The Vow, coming off our series about parenting, is just simply to build families. It's to simply make it all that God would have it to be. Genesis chapter 2 verse 24, this is what it says. This explains why a man leaves his father and mother and is joined to his wife, and the two are united into one. Now, I talked last week about the vow of priorities, and I chose to use the word out of the Hebrew language, leave. It literally means, not that we want to get real deep and theological and all that good stuff and, and flex the education muscles, what I say, but I want you to understand that this is what it's talking about. When it says leave, you say, okay, it means to leave. Yes, it does at face value, but it also, it also denotes with it that we reprioritize our relationships. That's why it's the vow of priority. And, I, and the catchphrase, the catchphrase for us last week is that, that when we reprioritize, that we, we put these things into right priority and purpose, is that God is my one and your spouse is your two. Because, see, we have this, we say, I found the one. I understand what you're saying. I get that. I, I do. But I want you to think with me, all right, about how that person can't be the one. Because they'll never, you'll either idolize or demonize that person because they can never fulfill the void that you have there. They may make it exciting for a moment. They may bring joy for a moment. They may bring happiness for a moment. But I promise you, a marriage that is worth having, that has duration to it, it takes dedication, desire, decision, and you got to work at it every day. You got to understand that I will absolutely chase my one, all right, the one, as I prepare for my two, okay? That's, that's what we talk about at leave. He says leave. It's we reprioritize our relationships, all right? I understand we leave mom and dad's home, but literally that word means in its context right there that we reprioritize. That's what we talked about last week, that we're going to absolutely seek the one while we prepare for the two. If you are single now, if you are married, you got to continue to understand that the number one in your marriage is Jesus. Sandra loves Jesus more than she loves me, and I'm okay with that. Matter of fact, I'm blessed by that and for that reason, okay? I've been on the other side of that coin and know how difficult it is to try to have that kind of love for two people. It don't work that way. You can't make somebody love you. You can't make somebody love God. And so she loves God, and because she loves God, she loves me and loves our daughters. And the same could be said about me. Now, are we always lovely? No. That's why it's important that the love of Christ is number one. Now, 
When we get that in the right priority and work to get it in the right priority and work at it every day, you have to be strategic every day. You can't take a day off from working at being a better human being. You can't take a day off from working at being a better husband, a better wife. You can't take a day off from working at being a better parent. You can't do that. It takes work every single day day, all right? So once we get that and we start working that direction, then we have to understand what we're going to look at today, and that is that we vow to continue to pursue our two. So he's our one, I found my two, but what we have to understand as the days go on and the years get behind us and the kids grow and we have more than one kid or we get more than one project going on and we get distracted by life, okay? that we are constantly reminded of a promise, a vow that we made that we would always pursue our better half, all right? Let, let me tell you where that comes from. Let me explain just a little bit about what it's saying there. The word leave is where I got last week. This week, the word that really jumped out at me when I started to study that verse of Scripture in Genesis 2.24 is that that word united, all right? That word united says, and they, the two are united and become one. And I'm like, yeah, baby, all right? But but it means so much more than the physical side of that or moving into one home, okay, all right, not cohabitating before marriage. I'm not trying to be legalistic or beat you up, but statistics tell you if you you shack up, as the old old timers would say, before you're married, it definitely is a sin. I'm not judging you. I'm no better than you. I tried to get Sandra to move in with me. I didn't have a clue about the church. I ain't going to lie to you. I'd pout every time she left the house. We set curfew, and when she had to leave, and don't you look at me like that that are dating right now, okay? All right? I was like, you might as well go ahead and move on in. I'm going to marry you. I'm going to make you a good woman. All right? Right? But statistics tell us if you do that, that you probably won't make it. It'll definitely be, definitely be more difficult. Okay? And so, yes, it means becoming one. Yes, it means the physical. But what I want us to focus on this morning and have a little fun flirting with the physical side of it is that, listen, it means to cling to. This is where I get the word. It means to catch by pursuit. Think about it, man. It's in our DNA. It's how we're created to pursue something we don't have. We get our mind made up on something we want. It doesn't matter what anybody says. We're going to do what we got to do to get what we want. The problem is most of the time we don't really know what we want, really what we need, okay? And so this word pursue this word unite means that i'm going to pursue them with love and affection that's literally what that word denotes or carries with it in that text and so yes i'm going to be united with them but it can't be that one moment it has to be that i'm constantly and that i vow that i promise that i will not stop as my grandma used to tell me and nanny used to say all the time i'm going to continue to court my wife that's an old-fashioned word but it's a very relevant word that I'm going to pursue them. I, I, I want them to be pursued. I, I want them to understand that, that, I, that I'm willing to work for them. One of the most beautiful stories, you with me say amen. Some absolutely turned me off when I said bounce, wow, wow, all right. One of the most beautiful stories in the Bible is an Old Testament story found in Genesis chapter 29. I don't have anything up there. I just know this, but in studying for this week and listening and reading and all that good stuff. But it's a beautiful story. It's the, it's the love story uh, between Jacob and Rachel. It's in Genesis 29, I believe. And, and it's, it's an incredible love story. We get kind of lost in some of the weirdness of that story, but it's a beautiful love story. See, he wants to marry. He, he finds his two, okay? All right? And he wants to marry, but the dad's like, wait a minute, he's, he's strong and strong. I'm paraphrasing, so don't, don't inbox me later. You didn't quote that just right, preacher. That's not the king's English. Please, just let me paraphrase the story for a second time. He's wanting her. He said, that's, that, that's my two. That's who God has made for me. I want Rachel. And the dad's like, no, he's young, strapping strong. I'm going to put him to work. And so he says, you got to work seven years. And so, hey, Jacob's like, I'll do it. That's cool. Then after seven years, he's tricked, right? He marries the sister. They said that she was easy on, I mean, anyway, the, he wanted her and got this one, right? Okay. Well, what's really neat and interesting after that first seven years, you with me? At the tree, tricks of Mary. What's really interesting and makes it a beautiful love story is after the first seven years, that was, that was the, the, the vow, okay? He is, most of us miss this, but the, the dad gives him Rachel. Now, what's really neat about the story is that he asked him to work seven more years. 
So what, what I want you to, and this, watch this, you're going to think I'm really making stuff up. It's not, it's, it is absolutely the same Hebrew connotation. It means the same thing that he, listen, that he was willing to work for his two even after he had her. Do you understand that? It's beautiful. It's like once I have her, once we're married, once she's my wife, then I'm like, or once he's my husband, I don't have to pursue anymore. No, I promise you, if you want a happy marriage, if you want a joyful marriage, if you want a God-honoring marriage, if you want a relationship that is God-designed and God absolutely pleasing, then you got to work every day. And listen, I get around older folks. I'm 42. I get, I'm getting older, but I like to get around older folks. And I don't even have to ask those older folks and couples questions. I just watch how they interact with each other. And you can tell the ones that, listen, they don't pursue each other anymore. Life's gotten too busy. They, they, they've moved on beyond it. Too many years are between the time that they were in the courting and the early newlywed phase. Listen, I'm telling you, the honeymoon will go over quick. It will not always be peaches. It will not always smell like unicorn pooch. It will not, I promise, I promise. His underwear will stink. His socks will stink. I'm telling you, listen, she will clog the drain up with her hair. She should be bald by all the hair that's in that drain, man. I'm telling you, it is not. She is not always pleasant. She don't wake up in the morning looking like what you thought she looked like, I promise. I got a few photos. Like I said, I wish, I wish, I, but I got to live with her. But that hair's like poof, everywhere in the morning, right? That's just the real, real. And I got one eye crusted over and, and, and drawers all crooked and crazy looking. And I mean, listen, it works both ways. But listen, I promise you, it's not all that up front. And you'll have to work at it. You will have to constantly pursue even after you have them. That's what a beautiful relationship looks like. Now, I want to do a few things this morning and, 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 and talk about how we will continue. This is our vow, right? We will continue to pursue our two. Okay? Just to flow with the words. I will continue, I promise to continue to pursue my two. Now, let me stop a moment before I give you some application so we can bridge the gap between intention and application, right? Because men or women, if you have good intentions, that ain't going to get it done, right? I got great intentions. I, I matter of fact, yesterday, we sold a lot of exercise equipment. You know what was said about them when they went to pick them up or when they were delivered? They, the, before they brought them or we picked them up, they had to take a bunch of clothes off of them. Because see, when they first got the piece of exercise equipment, their intention was, I'm going to get in shape, look good, so he will continue to pursue me or she will continue to pursue me. And then it becomes just a big clothes rack. Because intention won't get it done. It takes action. And I want to help bridge that gap this morning. But before I go on to all my single ladies, all right, and men, I want to take just a moment like I did last week and, and address you. And I want you to understand something with me. Listen to me. Listen to me carefully and get this. Please get this. Please get this. You, hey, you are worthy of pursuing. Do you understand me? You are worthy of pursuing, man or woman. Listen, you're worthy. You're worthy. I don't care what your daddy said about you. I don't care what your ex said about you. You are worthy. I don't care if you have, in the years gone by, given it away very easily. I want you to understand and get right with Jesus and know that what you are and who you are and what you have to offer is worthy of pursuit. I don't care if you've been rejected multiple times. I want to remind you this morning that even if you were rejected, I want you to get this truth and I want you to download it. I want you to listen that if you are watching live feed, that out of your rejection may come your greatest blessing ever. I was told, you listening to me? I was told I don't love you anymore and I didn't think anybody else will. And I got somebody that will tell me all the time, every day, multiple times in multiple ways, I love you. I was told... You couldn't preach anymore. Well, I got good news for you and for them. I'm still preaching, baby. Because out of your greatest rejection, worst devastation can come your biggest blessing. So don't you ever sell out for something cheap. You are worthy of being pursued. You're worthy. I don't care if he or she left you feeling cheap used up and worthless. You are worthy. I try to teach my daughters every single day. You are worthy. You are to be treated when that time comes. You are to be treated like a princess. Why? Because you're a child of a king. Not Hendrix, Yahweh, Jehovah, 
God Almighty, you've both said yes to Jesus, and they deserve no less. So any of the young men come courting around my house, they're going to know real quick what the standard is. You are worthy. They are worthy. I am worthy. Tell yourself every day you are worthy. Yes, you may have fallen. Yes, you may have made some mistakes. Yes, you may have been addicted. Yes, you may have filed bankruptcy. Yes, you may have had an abortion. Yes, you may have been molested. Yes, you may have been... Yes, all those things may have happened. But the good news is you're not defined by what has happened except over 2,000 years on a hill called Golgotha. That's the only thing that divides us. I am a new creation in Jesus Christ, and I am worthy. I am worthy. I am worthy. You are worthy. So I just wanted to take a moment to speak to all my single folks or single again folks. Do not sell yourself short. You are worthy in Jesus Christ. So now let me take the remainder of the time, and Sandra will help me. I love this. Let me close the gap or kind of bring closer the gap between our intentions and our actions for those of us that are in a relationship. If you're not, these are some great notes for you, okay? And they have been learned. I promise you, I'm still learning these things every day, so do not think I have arrived, okay? Do not think we have this thing worked out. There is, there is no perfection in this home at whatsoever, every day. As a matter of fact, you'll get it as I go through this message. I, I was intentional this week to send more messages and to be more encouraging this week, all right? So when I give her the mic in a little bit, she won't just like boom, run right over me, okay? Even though she has the right to do so, all right? Let's, let's, let's bridge. Let me give you three applications or three things that you can put into application. I don't care what stage you are in your marriage either, by the way. I don't care what, I, I, I promise, I, I promise that I pray often and I often joke with her, I promise, I ask God daily that he would always give me a desire because I desire my wife, all right? I'm not trying to be physical, but it is physical, it is spiritual, it is mental, it is social, she's my best friend. I desire her, I pray that I don't know what it's like to be 80, but when I'm 80, mm, I hope I still desire her. You know what I'm saying? And I mean that multiple ways. I ask every day. Okay? Now, I will say this before I go on. I'm going to give you some illustrations, give you some things. She did ask me not to embarrass her in front of her mama today. All right? So I, 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 I won't. All right? First thing to close the gap between intention and, and action is this. When you think of something good, when you think of something good, Say it. When you think of something good, say it. And let me break it down and really give it application to, for men and women, okay? And, and I may be wrong for some of you, but I don't think I will be, all right? When you think of something good, say it. If you want to pursue them, if you want to keep that marriage exciting, if you want it to be as exciting as it once was, listen, and it can be, it can, it can be even better, all right? then you got to constantly be reminded that when you think of something good, say it. Say it. Men, let me speak to you first. Men, I want you to use words of affection. I understand, I understand that you're not really an affectionate person and tough. I beg to differ. Some of the, the most affectionate, most loving in a, in a friendship, brotherhood way that I know of you men are the ones that when I first meet you, you look like you'd rather cut me than to cut up with me. You're tough. But I've watched you cry in a service. I've watched you light up when you talk about your wife or your children. And so I wanted to remind you this morning that when you think of something good, say it. Write a note text it. There's no reason, but when you think of something good, say it. And men, I want you to use words of affection. And men, let me stop just a moment here and say this. Listen, I want you to use words of affection. Listen to me, please. I want you to use words of affection that are non-sexual. You all right? Some of you go, well, what am I going to say to her then? So you're going, what's he talking about? Let me say it one more time. Listen real slow, Okay. I want you to use words of affection, but I want you to try using words of affection that are non-sexual. And listen, don't think, don't look, some of you looking at me like my, y'all looking like I'm crazy, like I lost my mind. You think we, listen, we are wired this way. I'll give you an example. 
Mama will say, I'm going to wash the dishes. I'm going to say, I'm going to wash your dishes. We men can turn anything sexual. That's just how we wired. You go up there and preach. I'm like, I don't preach later, baby. You go cut it. I'll cut your grass later. I want you to try to use words of affection that are not, don't look at me like that. You women know that's how we're wired. That's why you have that dream of a wedding that's all this stuff, and the men, they just dream of that day that they get married and think they have sex twice a day, and most people are still dreaming. Neither one come true. I want you to use words of affection that are of a non-sexual way. And you say, well, what do you mean, preacher? I'm trying to be a little tongue-in-cheek and be funny with you because I want you to learn. But I want you to use words of affection. Let me tell you something. This is what I've, I've tried to implement, and I was taught by those that are way smarter and been made way longer than me. I try to use this little, this, little, uh, this little phrase, and I use it as often as possible. I want you to start seeing that. I want you to do this as often as you can. I want you to say, I love you because, and I want you to fill in the blank. And non-sexual, okay? All right, I've already, we've, we've got this all out, right? Well, I mean, at times, you know, bounce it around, well, all right? Be freaks, all right? If it's illegal and safe, have at it, man, okay? All right? And it's biblical, have at it, Okay? But in a, in a non-sexual way, I want you men, seriously, we're, we're wired different. I want you to say, I love you because. And let me encourage you, okay? All right, women, you can elbow them if you want to. I, let me encourage you to change that because as often as you possibly can. Like, like for, for instance, I, I, I just wrote down three or four, okay? I, I, I love you, Sandra, because you're my best friend. I love you because you're an amazing mom. I love you because... You make me a better man, a better dad, and just a better human being all around. I love you because no matter how crazy life gets, you always keep us centered. I would encourage you, if you think of something good to say, say it. Don't live life with regrets. Say it. Encourage them. Women, I want you to use words of affirmation. And women, I want you to stop being so sick. No, I'm just kidding. We don't want that at all. We want you to be as sexual as possible, okay? But no, I want you to use words of affirmation. If you think of something good, say it. Use words of affection. Men, women, use words of affirmation. Women, are you listen only women? Just say amen, please. Okay, that's three or four of you, but in your, your homes are going to get better. The rest of you, we're praying. He is becoming, he is becoming what you see and say in him. If all you do is tell him what he does wrong, he will always do what is wrong. Do you understand what I'm trying to say to you? Do you, do you did you, some of you, you were, you were absolutely, the, you, the wind was taken out of your cell, women, when you discovered that you actually can't change that man. Yeah. See, some of them got it, and they got a good marriage. Or they're single and don't ever want to be married again. <laughs> you can't change. Matter of fact, you can't change anyone. The only person you can change is yourself. And so what we men need, we need to be affirmed. I don't need to, listen, and, and don't get me wrong, she will be quick to tell me what I've done wrong. Okay, so I'm not talking about be unreal, okay? I know these are ideal and we live in the real, okay? Just like in a panty suit. I, I don't mean that. And I don't, and listen, I want you to know that you should, listen, you are worthy, right? This, this is what you should expect. Men, we should expect, we should, we should apply that, that affection and tell them we love them. And then we, we, we really want affirmation. We, we will become what you see and say in this. And this is spiritual, this is mental, and this is physical. I, I, I won't, I, listen. Stop telling him what he's not and start speaking life to him. Did you know the power of life and death resides in the tongue? Speak life to the situation. Encourage him. Do you, I, I'm telling you, this is, this, is the, this, this is the gospel truth of just personal information here. When I'm done teaching on any level, whether it's here, a conference, a Bible study, two people, I, whatever, I can have all of them tell me I did an amazing job. I, I can have all the act, I can do all, I can get a war, I can do all this stuff. But until Sandra says, 
That was really good today. None of it matters. That's how we're wired. Men want, we want affirmation. Mentally, I like every now and again to be reminded that I had a good idea. Ah, you always saying, that was a dumb, why you, that's the dumbest thing? I told you. Because every now and again, I know, mama, it's far and few between, but every now and again, we men have a good idea. And we should be reminded. It's, it's spiritual. Let, let, me, let, me, let me go back to that spiritual. Let's say you, you want your husband to lead you spiritually in a stronger way. Well, listen, every little chance you get, encourage him. I don't care if he prays for the food. It's Mother's Day or it's Thanksgiving. It's holiday. Everybody's together. And, and he's like, I'm going to pray today. I'm going to pray today. And he's like, you know, he's like, I, I heard, I heard Groeschel say, he said, you know, God is great. God is good. Let us thank us for this food. I don't care. What, hey, if, it's, if that's where they start, they say, hey, that was a, just lean in and say, that was a great prayer. Now, I promise you, I promise you, mama, if you start doing these things, you will see it. Men, I promise you, if in a non-sexual way, you'll start saying, I love you, and doing all kind of things to say, hey, I love you because this, 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 or this, you will see a difference. You see, as I move on and I, I get to the, to, the, to the kind of the close here, you see, it, 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 give me a few minutes, but, but let, let, me, let me just kind of sum this up about this. this if, you, if, you, if you think of something good, say it. Stop telling him what he's not. Because here's what, here's men, let them know every day they are loved. Let them know every day they are loved. And women, I promise you, let them know every day that you believe in them. That's the two greatest needs of both. A woman needs to know she's loved. She may, she may be tough on the exterior. She may be hardened because of some rejection and hurt in the past. But I promise she'll realize she's worthy if you won't give up. But every day reminder, every day reminder, she's loved. And I promise you, you want to see a difference in your relationship with him, then affirm him every day. Let him know every day that you believe in him. And even sometimes, I'm not saying tell a lie, but even sometimes when it just don't turn out quite the way he thought it would turn out, it's okay to say to him, good job. It's okay to point out a few times that we get it right. We need to know every day that you believe in us. And it will absolutely, absolutely strengthen your relationship. The second thing, I got three of them, I told you. The second one is this. When you think of something special, do it. Let me just give you a couple ideas. Listen to them. And men, especially men, I can only come from this side. We'll have Sandra come up and share a few things in closing in a moment. Listen to them. I struggle with this. Listen to them. I, I don't want you just to hear them. I want you to stop, turn the TV off, put the knife down, put the golf club down, put the, listen, put the weed eater down. I don't know, put, put it down. Put the phone down and listen to them. If you think of something special, do it. Help them more with the kids. Prepare dinner. Do the dishes. And then she may say, I'm going to do your dishes. Anyway, and make sure you're listening. Remember last week, lock the door, okay? That's all some of you got out of it. Date night, get up earlier than the kids, even if it's just spend 10 minutes together. Put the phone up, pray together, write a love note. Go for a drive. And, and listen, I put this one in here because about every time I get in mama's car, this one applies. Every now and then, just get up, take her car to the store, and fill it up with gas, because every time I get mine, it's empty. Just, do, just, 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 if you think of something special, do it. Watch a chick flick every now and again. That one's brutal for me. I'm just being honest, I can't stand it. And then vice versa, mama, every now and again, watch him shoot them ups. Blood and good, ah, whatever, whatever, right? If you think of something special, do it. Send a special text, just a random text. That's one of the things that, man, I'm telling you, listen, most days I'm working, 
When I do go back to the work truck and get a drink of water, whatever the case may be, it's really cool to see all those texts that are needing something or wanting something or whatever the case may be. And that's my life. I understand that. But what's really, really cool and really encouraging is to read when it says, hey, babe, I hope you're having a great day. I love you. It means the world to me. It fires me up. I run the saw twice as fast. Not really. But anyway, send flowers. Send a flower. I mean, just, I'm just practical things. And let me say before I move on, because I'm, I'm, I'm really out of time. But listen to me. Men, when you send flowers, I've learned this too. When you send flowers, I send, I send them, but I send them far and few between. And now girls are old enough, they can actually take them in, okay? When you do send them flowers or a special note or something, listen to me. Are you listening? Say amen. Do it when other women are around. I promise you. I promise you it will help you. Because I don't care what they say. They like that, all right? My man sent me some flowers and chocolates. Yeah, I promise, okay? When you, listen to me, when you think of something special, do it. Let me give you the last one. When you want something different, be it. When you want something different, be it. Stop complaining about what you don't have and start doing something to make a difference. You know, if you have always, Sandra, will you come up here, please? If you always do what you've always done, you will always get what you've always got. And if you are miserable and don't like it, then stop trying to change him or her and start changing yourself and do something different. If you want something different, be it. You can't change anyone, as I said, except yourself. Now, to make the message full and complete before I give an invitation, as I've done and will do every week, I've asked my beautiful wife to come and add her thoughts as God is leading her. Please, will you give her your attention? And I'm going to try to listen to her and not just hear. Where is the mic? Mm, that's a good question, baby. Got you. Mm-hmm. Not on your mic. I love you, baby. Well, when you think about it, do it. That's why I'm preaching. I got to practice what I preach. I'll affirm you later. Woohoo! Happy Mother's Day. Um, I had written down notes kind of all over the page, things we had talked about, because he gave me warning this time instead of telling me when I got to church last Sunday. So I kind of knew I was going to be up here this time. Um, and I was. He had asked me two questions. He had asked me about um, how do you continue to pursue in the marriage and how do you add value to the marriage. So I was thinking as women, um, we want to be pursued because it fills our emotional needs. We, um, we desire that. We want to know that we're loved and that we're needed. But I was thinking that, you know, my husband is worth my love and devotion, so therefore I should pursue him as well. Um, so I had some do's and some don'ts. Um, and because the things that I read and just how we kind of live our life. Some don'ts that I thought, to, thought about was um, a lot of times we get into um, a few years into the marriage, you get into pursuing like objectives more so than your spouse. So we end up putting things like our job or your business. The children is a big thing that comes beforehand. Hobbies. We even put church first. Um, so Realize that you're not pursuing those objectives, and those are things that we want to accomplish. We want to be successful. We want our children to be successful, but we shouldn't pursue those things. Make sure you're pursuing your spouse. Um, I also said, um, you know, this is not like a checklist. So once you start thinking about these things, don't, like, make yourself a checklist that you have to, you know, send this message at 8 a.m., uh, give them a phone call during lunch. Yeah, don't be routine in it, right? Then yeah. it's kind of fake. What did I tell you last week? Interruption. Um, and then I said, um, and also, and I think a lot of us get into this, um, don't have that, um, tit for tat mentality where if, um, maybe I think of something, but then I'm like, well, he hasn't told me anything today. He hasn't shown me any words of affection. So you can't have that mentality. Even if, um, maybe you haven't felt like you have. Um, heard those words of affection that you wanted to hear that you needed that day. Same goes for us. You know, step up and make sure you show him what you want to receive. 
Then I was uh, looking at some things that we should do to pursue our husbands. Um, And yeah, I I have a little poster for you. Um, Initiating intimacy. Um, Yes, ladies, you can do this, and we won't go any further because my mama and nanny are here too. Initiate intimacy. Okay. Um, He talked about this. Uh, Show him affirmation. And, you know, I know the definition of affirmation is a s- emotional support and encouragement. Um, they all want to be tough on the exterior and act like they've got all this stuff together. But um, our husbands are emotional creatures as well. And they need that emotional support from us. And they also need that encouragement. Um, and let's see. I had serving. Um, just how can ask your husband what can I do how can I help you today what can I do for you today what would make it easier on you today Joel does this for me a lot I have to give him credit for that Um, especially since he's doing drop off and pick up and things like that so maybe it's time I'm almost 46 that I should learn how to uh, ride a lawnmower or push one because I've never done that before you can say I'll cut your grass baby um other ones that I just wrote down quickly were um you make him a priority. He was talking about that. Be intentional and um, deliberate. Make sure you do it on purpose. You have to be intentional. Even if you have to schedule it at first, so it becomes a good habit. Get up early. Spend that time with each other. Yeah. Um, flirt with him. You know, let him know that um, he's still the best looking thing you've seen. You know, yeah. sweet baby cakes. I love you. You look awesome. Your arms are getting bigger. Things like that. Um, I'm getting excited. If when he comes home, greet him when he comes home. You know, don't, as soon as he walks through the door, talk about how horrible your day was or he walks in and tries to speak to you and you're like, stop, I'm trying to get the homework done, I'm trying to cook dinner. Take that time, be intentional, stop and acknowledge that he's there. Ask him how his day went. Um, I like this one, study him. We all change and we all change as our marriage continues to grow. We like um, different things, we find other interests. We'll share those interests together. You can't pursue him. You can't um, value him if you don't know him. So don't let the devil get in there and separate you and put distance between you. Make sure that you know each other and you continue to learn about each other as you grow older together. Um, This is one that Joel will appreciate. Ladies, filter your mouth. Sometimes um, everything that we think, we tell our children this, does not have to come out of our mouth. So stop. Some of those things that you think, you may not want to say right away. Are we still recording? So make sure that you are choosing your words carefully. I tell her sometimes, let me say, I know we're out of time. Listen to me. Listen to me. Sometimes she comes in and teaches third grade. If you don't know that about my, my beautiful wife, she teaches third grade. And sometimes I realize I act like a third grader, but sometimes I have to stop her and say, listen here, you don't have to talk to me like a third grader, Okay. So I I think that's very, it's funny. It happens quite often, though. And then, um, you know, obviously pray for your husband. Pray for him. Pray with him. um, Because he is the leader um, of your home. He is running your household um, as instructed biblically. So you, but it is also our job to pray for him. Um, I said, be intentional in your thoughts, your actions, and your habits. Build those good habits and not those that we kind of get into because of our craziness of, you know, just filling our guts and venting as soon as they walk in. Make sure you have that time to where you are um, showing those words of affection and affirmation. And then uh, I was thinking about the value part. Um, Speak value, and he touched on this earlier, not negative or harmful um, words you need to build each other up and not tear each other down. And I had um, Proverbs 14, a wise woman builds her home, but a foolish woman tears it down with her own hands. Um, and then to treat um, your spouse with value. Um, and I, I thought, especially for our children's sake, I mean, if we want them to grow up and have these godly relationships and find that person that's God designed for them, well, it starts in the home. We have to show each other how to treat you each other that's value. So, that's so good, too. Let me say, I, I wanted to say it in part of the sermon, but it makes me think of that. Sometimes Lana and Addison, will, that, because I'm still pursuing Sandra, they, they, they're at 13, you know, they'll be like, ooh, ugh, I don't want to see that. And, 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 and I, I get that, and it's so funny and stuff like that, and I go even overboard, you know, um, in a maybe PG-13 way and stuff. 
uh, because mom gets a little different kind of kiss and stuff like that than we kiss our children. But I think that what I'm doing and, and we're doing is showing them this is the kind of love you want. Now, it might not be as silly and as crazy, right? But they are worthy. They are worthy of pursuit. They are worthy of being loved on like that in the right godly context, okay? So I think that's, that's, that's good stuff. Good preaching, girl. And um, scripture for to treat with value is Philippians 2, 2 through 4. Then make me truly happy by agreeing wholeheartedly with each other, loving one another, and working together with one mind and purpose. Don't be selfish. Don't try to impress others. Be humble, thinking of others as better than yourselves. Don't look out only for your own interests, but take an interest in others too. Yeah. yeah. But you know, I'm an only child, so I have my, I call it my OCS, my only child syndrome. So I really have to work on that one. Because, Amen. Um, and then um, the third one, and lastly, is to acknowledge God's value. If, if you're not acknowledging that um, first and foremost, then we don't have any value. There's no value in us as individuals, or there's no value in us as a couple and as a family to lead our family if we don't acknowledge God's value. So uh, the last thing I was thinking when he was talking earlier was um, if you look at it, and, and because I'm a teacher, I think in these terms, you can use like an addition, you can use multiplication, but what you never want to do is use subtraction or division um, for affection and affirmation equals accountability. So, and you can hold each other accountable for being intentional in that. And once you're intentional in that and you do that for a while, you'll develop those good habits and they'll replace those bad habits where we just get really comfortable with each other. So we feel like we can vent and that's what our best friend is there for. Yeah. But don't make that your daily routine and don't make that your main conversation every day. You have that person that will listen to you, but make sure that you are um, being intentional and sharing the good things um, so that you can continue to deepen and develop your relationship. Absolutely, absolutely. Hey, will you give her a hand, please? Thank you so much, baby. Just cut it off and take the mic with you if you want to. Okay. I, uh, I got to be honest as we close, and, and if you will, come and, and play. We're, we're way out of time. Thank you for being patient with us. Um, I want to say to you that she's making me think, that, especially right there at the end, that she, she is and has been, and I'm so guilty of this, but she has been my scapegoat. I've, I've had a bad day or, or a bad situation, and, in, and what I would really like to tell that member that's disgruntled with me or somebody that makes a post or criticizes me or whatever, and, and there's a little bit of truth in every criticism, instead of being able to say that to them or say that to my, I'll be honest with you, my ex, sometimes I take that out and project that. It's not the rejection. It's just a projection of that rejection, that hurt, onto her. And, and she's been so good to, t to develop me and to teach me and say, wait a minute, that's not my fault. Instead of lashing back out at me to help educate me to understand that, wait a minute, that what really was uncalled for. This has nothing to do with her. And, and the same thing with her. If you come home, sometimes I have to say, listen, I'm not a third grader. I may act like one, but I'm not in your class. You don't have to talk to me that way. I'm not that parent that thinks their kid is the golden child, okay? All right? And so I, this is just good stuff. And I, I hope that you're, you're listening to us and trying to learn. And, I, and I'm being real with you when I say this. I'm not even trying to be funny or, 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 or tongue-in-cheek. I, I desire my wife. She, she is absolutely who God created for me. There's not, a, there's not an ounce. I, I aggravate her often. Um, she is blessed to have a high metabolism, uh, to be at her age and, and eat and, and do it. And I aggravate her all the time, but she's the most beautiful woman that I've ever seen in my life. She is my heart's desire. She is absolutely, absolutely a blessing to me. I pray that every day that you try to show affection to your wife, or if you're the missus here, I pray every day that you affirm let me, let me have you stand to your feet. I'm going to open the altar one more time, and we're done. We're, we're at about a quarter to 12. Please, please don't let the time distract you. It's so funny, too. You're going to hear about this. Uh, Jordan uh, Rogers, uh, whom hopefully next Sunday I will tell you what our plans are with Jordan. He's working in our children's ministry this morning. It's his first time not working with children, but in this children's ministry. And Grayson has the nursery with some help. And so I think it's good that it's a little long today, all right? You ladies that have it every Sunday and that are working there. But let me, let me, let me remind you as we open this altar that God demonstrated the greatest example of pursuit. As a matter of fact, he tells us, I believe in 1 John, he writes, that we love because he first loved us. As a matter of fact, Dr. Luke would write that Jesus said he came to seek and to save which is lost. Our God pursues us with a fierce, with a passion. He loves us. I'm also mindful of those of you that 
Let me ask you as we open the altar, how many of you, especially you men, how many of you have done something foolish in the name of love? I mean, you just done something crazy in the name of love. She was like, what in the world was you that crazy? But they really liked it. And the same for you ladies. Well, let me ask you this. Why'd you stop doing that? You see, if you'll take it and let me apply this to it, I believe it, I believe it applies. Jesus in Revelation chapter 2, he writes to the church at Ephesus and he tells them, he says, listen, you, you've moved far. As a matter of fact, I, I, I know I put this in my notes. He said this, he says, look out in Revelation 2, 5, he says, look how far you have fallen. Turn back to me and do the work you did at first. Some of us have had to learn the hard way what bad looks like. And we've learned from those times of rejection so that in this season of our life, we can apply the affection and the affirmation and the godliness in it. But, but if you, why, why did you stop doing crazy things? Why did you stop leaving the notes? Why did you stop sending flowers? Why did you stop buying the chocolate? Why did you stop doing these chores? Why did you stop, why did you do, stop doing those things? Listen, if you want it, I promise you, I promise you, you got to do something different or do what you did at one time. I promise, under the authority of God, you can have a great life. And it doesn't take stuff to make a great life. You just got to want it. And you got to let them know they are wanted. Will you pray with me, Father, as we open the altar? If there's families, if there's, if there's couples here this morning that are on the verge of separation or even divorce or anything like that or just hanging on by a thread, I don't know that they need to come to the altar, but I pray that they will unite their hearts and they will seek you. They will pursue you first, and you will radically shift their marriage. For those of us that want to continue to have a godly and Christ-centered marriage, God, fire us up to stay crazy in love, to show this world, starting in our own home first, that we are a fool for our wife or husband. Thank you for giving us relationships. Thank you that even out of rejection comes blessing. I pray that there are those here today or that will listen or have been listening, they will be reminded that they are worthy to be pursued. I pray. Our altar's open. We'll just keep it open as long as there's need. If you have need, please come. We'll pray for you and over you, please. Please come. It's been a good day in the house. It's been a good day. Won't you come?